Hey guys, how y'all doing? We have gone in leaps and bounds since I spoke to you last. And uh, I found the culprit in my wiring harness. I tracked it down to my short and blowing my fuse. And I'm gonna tell you what was causing that. But first, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you. Uh, I had my fuel pump and my neutral light plug-ins reversed. So the power that fed the fuel pump was going straight to ground, which was a dead short. Caused my fuse to blow. And the way I found it, I came out here yesterday before work and I hooked up my test meter to my hot battery wire. That was the one I had to already track down to what was short. And I just started unplugging stuff. I had the other end on ground. And of course my needle was pegged. And I just started unplugging everything. Started up at the ignition switch and the CDI box. And the handlebar switches. All those plugins. And I started working my way back. And when I got to that neutral switch and unplugged it, my needle went, <laughs> fell right over. I was like, hey, hey. So I ended up not having to pull the whole harness out of the machine and tracking down every wire because that was my problem. So I plugged everything, fixed that, you know, switched them, put everything back together, tested it. And not only does my wiring harness work right, but with all the upgrades I did with the new magneto starter, new ignition coil, checking the air gap in my pickup coil, testing my CDI, making sure it was had the correct resistance in all the different connections. I have spark, which I didn't have that until then, which I just found that out a few minutes ago. And I'm going to show that to you now. All right, I shut the garage door and moved the camera, turned the ignition switch on, engine button on, on, and I'm going to hold the spark plug to where it grounds and hit the starter. Try this again. Anyway, I believe you can see that fire. That old, great, wonderful fire. So, Eureka. We're in like Flynn. So what I did then is I backed up and I went ahead and taped up all the loose wires. I'm still going to show you how to test out the stuff I haven't shown you yet. Alright guys, uh, like I said I'm going to show you, this is for you Mike, I'm going to show you how to use a multi-tester in case you don't know. I'm going to show you how to use a multi-tester. Real easy. I got an old cheap one here. Sorry. And what you do is you set it to where it says XK or X10 on one of these old ones. And it's got a symbol, unlike Prince's. And you're going to check ohms, which is resistance. And it'll have a symbol like this. Something like that. Okay? On your multi-tester. And what that means is you test two ends of one wire. And you've got continuity. It goes all the way through, which means there's no break in that wire. I'm sure that camera's probably picking it up. But you take your two leads and you touch them together and you see your needle move. That's continuity. And uh, there's, if you really want to get fine details, you look at the scale and there's zero resistance there. So that means it's going straight through. There's nothing holding it back. Now if you go through a headlamp or a starter motor or even your CDI box, you'll have resistance that's supposed to be there. And uh, you have to read the gauge. And if it goes over a lot, 
you got zero. If it goes over a little bit, you've got some resistance. Anyway, that's the idea. So, now if you have one of these newer ones, it's digital, it'll have that same symbol down in the corner. And set it on the lowest one. This one is 200. And uh, it says one, which means there's no value there at all. It's not doing anything. And you touch them together, and you've got 0.4 resistance, which means that's just the resistance that's in the wires right there. But basically, the current's going through there. Now, if I were to touch it to, uh, well, say something that had a, a, a wire that had a short in it, and it wasn't connected all the way through, it would come back to one because there's no resistance at all. There's no continuity. So there's no value there for it to pick up. Okay? All right, so that's a quick. Now, make sure you do not set it on the DC or AC because it won't work for this. It won't work for testing continuity. Always check your motorcycles and cars on DC, which is direct current. AC is alternating current, which you find in your homes. Okay? So all your house stuff is AC. All your cars and stuff is DC. And always set it at a little bit higher than what you're running. You're running 12 volts on your motorcycle or car. Set it on 20 or whatever the lowest is. Now, mine is two and a half, ten, or fifty. I always set it on ten when I do a car or motorcycle for checking for voltage. That way it just pegs the needle on this old one. And that way it's really easy to see at a glance. You either got power or you don't. There is a fuse in there you can blow it if you put too much current through there. To do it properly, I should set it on fifty and read the dial and see how many volts there are actually coming through. But generally I'm just checking to make sure the power's there. But on this digital one, I would set it on 20 because it's going to give me an accurate voltage count right here on the screen. Okay? All right. I'm going to turn this one off for a minute. And, uh, now if you watch my other video with the magneto, stator, and pickup coil, those three things, all you do is touch the two wires that come out of each one of those for continuity. If you don't have continuity, you probably need to replace whichever part failed on you. If you have to replace your stator, you're going to replace your magneto too because they, they are wound together. You can't buy them separate. When you buy one, it's got both. And just check the new ones before you put them in. Uh, the pickup coil, same thing. Is it got continuity or doesn't? If it doesn't, you got to change it. All right. The ignition coil, I've got the one I took off of here, and if you watch my video, you'll remember me saying that it tested out good. But the lead wire was no good. So, let me hook this up here, and then I'll show you. All right, here's the coil, and here's the meter. Hook that on one end with continuity. See if I get the needle moving? And just touch it. This is off the where the hot wire, the power wire goes in to your coil. And this is where it mounts and gets its ground. And you see I'm getting uh, continuity there, okay? So that part's good. That's the uh, primary or secondary wire, and I forget. But at this point, it doesn't really matter which one that is, as long as it works. Then you hook to the ground. And you fish around in there where the spark plug is going to plug in on that lead. And you see it jumping a little bit periodically when I touch it just right. There we go. That's got continuity. So this is a good coil. Just the wire was crap. So that's why I replaced that. That's how you test your ignition coil. Alright, this is a picture of the CDI wires. 
There's seven wires that come out of that, and you have to check each one against each one. And this is the graph to tell you what the resistance values you're looking for. My neighbor's mowing his yard, so this may be a little frustrating. But you have to check the red against, you don't check the red against the red, but you check the red against the black with red and all the others. And uh, where it has this infinity symbol, you're going to have uh, There's no resistance there, all right? You're not gonna get a value. But say you go black to black and red wire against the red wire, and your resistance should be between 25 and 180. And you go all the way across this scale and check each one individually. And if everything checks out, you're golden, which mine did, thankfully, because they're expensive. If you try to buy one, eBay or whatever, they're like 140 bucks. So, God be with you that that's not a problem for you and you can use the one you got. All right, I'm not gonna actually go through the process, but I think you understand. Point one to point four, it's gonna go all the way over. But when it's 35 to 180, it's barely gonna move. But if it doesn't move at all, then you got a problem. All right, this is for you, Mike, and uh, Slim Bob Pat. Hope that helps you. What else we got? All right. All right, I'll see you. Y'all be good. And I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. <laughs>